Hello, my name is Dan Skipout, and this is the 52 must-see movies and why they matter. And with me this week is Russell Howe. Uh, Russell, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good, uh, Dan. I appreciate you having me on. I'm glad we finally made time for this movie. Um, this was a movie I felt like should be on the list, and I'm uh, looking forward to talking about it. And that movie that he's uh, talking about is he nominated it. And so that's why he's on here talking about it. I felt like he has enough love of this film to where we could really have a uh, great conversation. That movie is City of God. Um, it's a Miramax film. Uh, we won't get into all the uh, particulars involving Miramax. But um, the, the actors that are in this film are uh, Alice Braga. Leandre Firmino, um, Sal, George, or Jorge, um, let me think here, uh, Douglas Silva, Alexander Rodriguez, um, the directors are Fernando Morales and Katia Lund. Do uh, you got anything to say about the, uh, the cast and the directors? Um, just the director, um, he had come off of, uh, well, he had later on, uh, had such recognition with uh, blindness. Uh, it was the film with um, Julianne Moore and uh, Mark Ruffalo. That was a really good film. And then he ended up directing um, uh, Rachel Weiss in the constant gardener that ended up uh, garnishing her a uh, first time uh, Academy award winning uh, actress award. So that was, um, so this, this, um, th this just shows you the scope of this director. Um, and I just thought that this film was something that I remember seeing back in 2002 and it just uh, resonated with me. And it was something that always stuck, stuck around with me just because it was such powerful storytelling and such powerful, uh, you know, cinematography in this film. And I just felt like this was an important movie to talk about. Yeah. And also I got um, Felipe and Jonathan Hagenson, their brothers, and they play uh, different characters. I don't think they really play uh, brothers in the movie, though. But they're, uh, I believe they're brothers in real life, and Felipe plays a, a big-name character in the movie, and we'll get to him uh, as we talk about the uh, story and so forth. And, of course, this movie takes place in um, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, in the slums uh, known as the City of God, where they put the dregs of society, the homeless people, the people they don't want to be associated with in the beautiful city of Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, and uh, it's it's funny you mentioned it's yeah it's the city of God. Um, there's really nothing there uh, for people to better their lives, and that's why we we see the uh, we see the uh, life of crime, we see the life of stealing, we see the life of uh, impoverished people like that because there is no way to better yourself. And fortunately, uh, we'll talk about later on in the film. We do meet somebody who ends up escaping the system and ends up making a name for themselves. Absolutely. And let's uh, with that, let's get into the story. Uh, the movie starts with knives on concrete. Uh, we have chickens. So obviously the knives are going to be used to um, kill the chickens um, and the chickens end up getting away. Uh, and we got music and we got men running after the chickens. This is the beginning of the movie. Russell. This just sets up the chaos that does ensue. I think it's kind of foreshadowing the chaos, the running around, the constant, you know, running around with your chicken, like like a chicken with your head cut off. Uh, it's, it's, it paints the foreshadowing what's to ensue, just the chaos that's going to happen here in, in Rio de Janeiro in the city of God. So I think that's kind of foreshadowing what's going on. And then this scene here obviously later sets up the ending of the film. But to jump back to the beginning, though, yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, the movie uh, takes place, the beginning of the movie takes place in the 60s. And that's what's interesting about this film. It does jump ahead uh, from, from decade to decade. And that's kind of neat because you get to see the different types of uh, the way the, the slum is, the city of God. It, it actually uh, grows and changes from time to time, from decade to decade with the character. So that's kind of a uh, interesting thing. Um, so the story of the tender trio, uh, Russell, the tender trio, um, this is yeah, how the, we, go ahead. The tender trio is just a recognized group of thugs. Pretty much. It's consisted of characters named Shaggy, Clipper and Goose. 
Um, and they pretty much make a name for themselves by robbing gas trucks. Um, that's how they pretty much come to notoriety. Um, and they are beloved kind of by the little kids that don't know any better. They're just revered as all oh, these guys are such, you know, these guys are such influential people and they're doing such big things with their lives, but let, they're, they're not realizing the full scope of exactly what is happening and what really these guys are doing and the life that they're leaving, the, the life that they are leading is a very dangerous life. Um, but yeah, the tender trio is those three guys. Um, and we pretty much, this is when we first meet, um, little dicey or little dice. Um, pretty much he is, he is rockets age in this, in at this time, in this time, uh, frame. Um, he pretty much just envies the uh, tender trio. He wants to be a part of them. Um, so he comes up with an idea to rob a whorehouse hotel. So that's pretty much how he sets that up. Yeah. Um, and you're getting a little bit ahead of me there. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so we got, they, like you said, they rob, uh, they rob gas truck. They rob um, car. At, you know, use the car as a getaway. Then they crash the truck into the uh, into a bar slash restaurant after they rob the hotel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because that was little dice's idea. Well, I got ideas. He's like, I got ideas. I, I, you know, you guys, you know, you need to listen to me. And of course, yeah. he's, and those guys are older kids. And you know, older kids don't listen to little kids, but they end up listening to him when they rob the hotel. Um, but they're you know, like you said, they they normally just rob gas trucks and just kind yeah. of petty stuff, you know. And little little do uh, they know that the police get called. This becomes a big ordeal. And they're hiding in the woods in a tree, except little dice who's supposed to shoot the window. He shoots the window and he goes off on his own, but we're not going to, we're not going to get into what little dice ends up doing just yet. We're going to, we're going to do a little bit of foreshadowing here, just like the film does Russell. Um, yeah. So they pretty much hide out in the tree the rest of the night because you know, they're it's, it's heavy. Uh, heavy with police and they don't want obviously to, uh, you know, get arrested or have to deal with the police. So they hide up there all night pretty much. And the funny part was that, that scene, um, Oh wait, no, that I'm trying to, I'm, I might be thinking ahead here when, um, he drops down from the, um, from the, uh, tree and he's walking back home and then they end up trying to arrest this other kid. I, I'm, I might be thinking the wrong, is that, is that the right thing? Yeah. 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 I just, I just thought that was funny. He's walking and he's just like walking like with a swagger to him and they don't even, the police don't even come up to him. They they're busy with the other kid behind him. That's really not bothering anybody. Yeah. That he was kind of funny. Limp. He has yeah. a limp, but he doesn't, he, he, he's like hiding his limp. Yeah. So he doesn't look suspicious, but they go run yeah. right by him right after the other. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's, it's just to show you, there's so much going on. I don't even think the police know what's going on. Cause this is just such a, um, uh, just a, a, an awfully run area, slum area of Rio de Janeiro. And it's just amazing. The crime, it's just, they see it every day. So there's like everyone's, if you're a breathing human being, you're a suspect. Oh, yeah. And, and that's just, that just, that just shows you um, just escape this, just the scope of how bad things are in this area. And I, the thing I appreciate with Fernando Mieres, the director, is just, it's the first person. Sh it's, it's like almost like a first person. They put you right into the slums. Like you feel like you're in there with the characters. And I think that's why it's 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 more of a, uh, a surreal uh, movie is because of that. It puts you in the in the driver's seat with these characters. And I think that's why it's such an important film. Yeah. Um, we also have a snitch named Shorty. Now, Shorty tells the cops where these guys are and they go through the woods and whatnot. But of course our guys get away and, but Shorty is still a major uh, part of the story because um, what's his name? Um, what is it? Shaggy ends up selling fish because his father gets upset with him and he says, you know what? You're going to join the family business and you're going to start selling fish. But he's got an eye for Shorty's girlfriend or wife or whatever. And needless to say, he's got this thing going on and he likes her. And he he wants to uh, lay with her. And, and of course, Shorty's ha having nothing of it. You know, and it, am I getting that right? Yeah, from what I saw. And then I see that that's where um, it's because of that. I think Shaggy ends up getting shot and killed. 
um, by the cops because he's in that area with her. And I think he, or no, he ends up, he was going to uh, go away with her. And remember he's running after her in the car because he, he gets out of the car or whatever. And then he's running. And then the, um, the cops or whatever end up shooting at him and, and he's running in the, in the back, back areas of the houses and stuff like that. He ends up getting shot and killed by the police. What? I actually got the names of them wrong. See, this is why this movie is very... It's it's very elaborate, yes. It's Goose that lays with Shorty's wife, and it's Shaggy who has a girlfriend of his own, and that's what happens. They want to leave town. Yeah. And then when the car breaks down, he has to get out and push the car, yeah. and that's when the cops shoot him. But Goose is the one that lays with Shorty's wife. I want to make sure that I got that clear. And, and Goose is Rocket's brother, yeah. So, to, to, so the so the audience understands that too. Yeah, Goose is Rocket's brother. We're going to talk more about Rocket uh, later on. That, and, and and this is why this I'm telling you this is a very confusing movie. If you haven't watched it, and even trying to talk about it is very can can be very confusing. So it's it it, it took multiple watches for me yeah. to make sure that I had my mind straight, and I still got yeah, it's, some of the uh, things wrong. Um, I compare I compare this film to like a spider web. Everything everybody's interwoven in an intricate part, and everybody plays a part in this big spider web. And it's it's hard to, um, you know, kind of recognize the difference of the characters because some of these characters you just see for a small fraction of time. Other characters play bigger roles, like Rocket and Little Dice, and all the, obviously guys like that. But when you see these little these little guys, like the Tender Trio, isn't in it very 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 much. So it's kind of hard to <clears throat> remember who does what in the film. Yeah, and. We end up getting into the 70s, but before we get into the 70s, we're going to talk about Little Dice. Now, we remember that Little Dice was supposed to shoot the window as a lookout so the guys would know if the cops came, why they're robbing a hotel. But what happens is all the guys come running out, they grab a car, they escape, and that's the car that goes into the restaurant. But what he ends up doing is he's got this violent... Uh, side to him and he goes in the hotel and shoots everybody which is funny because i i I believe the um i can't think of the one the one guy one of the tender trio guys um it might be the one that's with the with the girl um she's talking about all this all this bloodshed that was at the the whorehouse or the hotel or whatever and he's like well what are you talking about he's like we didn't kill anybody and that's when we figure out that these guys really weren't trying to you know, cause any, you know, any, be malicious to anybody. They were really just trying to rob the money and be done and be out. Um, and then this is where we first see that little dice obviously is more of a threat than we see because of the fact that this is foreshadowing the type of person that he's going to become later on down the film. And so we end up getting, um, he's counting his money and he's having a good old time because he's he been robbing people all along while these guys are running for their lives and hiding in, people's houses and laying laying low and having sex he's been robbing and making money and then when when goose gets caught by shorty having sex with his wife he runs through this like uh looks like they were building the house and they were like in in the in the kind of construction area he says what are you doing where'd you get all this money give me this money slaps him in the face and then um because he he his brother and him was selling fish he's like hey give me your shorts you know and the cops come running after him He's like, hey, that's his brother. Let's question him. So they grab his brother because yeah. he gave him his shirt and he took his shorts and he runs over there and says, hey, where'd you guys get all this money? Blah, blah, blah. This is my money. And the whole nine yards. Then when he starts running around, little dice goes, hey, you're going to need this gun, aren't you? You're going to get away. All right. He turns around, comes back, boom, kills him right there on the spot. And then we yeah. know that little dice is someone that you do not want to mess with. And that gets us into the 70s. Uh, yeah, the perfect segue to the 70s. We see um, pretty much a, a recurring theme with Rocket. He wants to be a photographer. He has a thing for taking pictures with his camera. Um, and this to him, I think, is going to be his escape. Eventually, he wants to do something with it. He knows that he has a strong passion for it. There's not going to be much uh, to live for uh, being on the streets, you know, in the slums, either do, selling drugs or either stealing ga- you know, gas or, uh, you know, stealing from people and stuff like that. He knows that the only way to make it honestly is going to be doing something else and doing something worthwhile so that's where we see the uh the photograph and the and the, and the camera take such a um uh it's an important thing moving forward that we end yeah. up seeing he ends up taking he's on the beach they're on the beach this is the first time we get to see the beach in uh this area 
and he's out there hanging out with his buddies and, and um, he ends up meeting a girl. Um, her name is Angelica and she's at the time she's dating a guy by the name of Tiago, but he's just having fun, taking pictures. Everybody likes him. And Tiago goes, goes into the water and, and um, Rocket goes, Hey, you know, can, you know, let's get a smoke, you know, let's and, yeah. and pulls in close. And then we know that basically they're kind of like, they like each other. Angelica and Rocket like each other. Um, and the play off that beach area, what a beautiful cinematography there. The beautiful uh, shot that we see there of the beach and the perfect water and everything just so beautiful and well laid out. Um, the cinematography is very beautiful in this film um, in certain areas, especially like that, just to see the overall what Rio can be. And, uh, it's like almost heaven compared to the slums that are hell in the, um, in the film. Um, yeah, it, it is a beautiful, beautiful uh, cinematography. And then like Tiago, as we as we see later on, it's funny that there's there's times in the film when he's taking pictures on the beach and it's like he almost like tries to uh, purposely like try to cut Tiago out of the picture. You know, I'll oh, step back a little bit, step back a little bit, kind of mm -hmm. like you're you're hogging up Angelica's areas like uh, spot of the picture. So you got to like back up a little bit. And then he snaps a picture. And you can't even see Tiago's like back in the shadows and stuff like that. I just thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, that was because he wanted to get the, the girls in bikinis. Yeah, he didn't yeah. want Diego. Yeah, I no. there, Diego. But uh, we also at the seventies we get uh, we get a story of a uh, a guy by the name of Blackie, and Blackie is a drug dealer um, who works for Big Boy, and Big Boy is kind of like the big man around. And then, but what happens is Big Boy gets killed by Carrot, and Carrot takes over big boy's territory but the apartment that big boy was working out of he didn't like it he thought it was a kind of a like a, a uh, um a cursed apartment somehow or yeah whatever. so he gives it to blackie he gives the apartment to blackie so blackie's working out of that apartment on his own he's got his area and carrot's got his area okay. um and that's the that's basically the story of the apartment yeah, they have like a quick, um, like a connect the dots of how the apartment became uh, from Blackie to end up getting into Carrot and stuff like that. So, I mean, if whoever you know decides to you know watch the film or whatever, you guys will see that. Um, we also find out um, Little Dicey has obviously changed his name now to Little Zay that we see too uh, coming up here. And this is where in the seventies we obviously find out that little nugget of information about the whorehouse and the truth behind it. I think is where we find that out. That we find out that Little Little Zay was the one behind all that chaos i believe yeah he it was uh but because we're still in the 60s i wanted to make sure i got oh, okay it. yeah 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 that's fine that's why i said it. And, and you hit the nail on the head he turns yeah. 18 and he gets a new name he gets mm -hmm. a whole new uh kind of uh outlook on well he didn't really have a new outlook but he kind of yeah goes, i'm a big shot now i'm 18 he feels more entitled yeah um and we just see a little uh, excerpt that they say something about he has become the uh, most respected hood member. Um, and he's the most wanted robber in Rio. So we just see the um, the growth of this character as a criminal. We see that this guy is really to be feared. He really is a menacing, ruthless character that does not have a heart, does not have compassion for anybody who just wants to constantly kill and take and take and take. And then and, and just and, 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 and drives from that notoriety that he gets from. Uh, other people, you know, uh, saying, oh, he's so, you know, feared and he's so, um, you know, menacing and stuff like that. He has a big ego complex. Yeah, absolutely. And so with that, he ends up coming to the apartment and at basically telling Blackie, who, who do you, why do you think this is your apartment? I run this area. Now, he shoots one of his lieutenants or or hanger honors or, or whatever. And then he says, you can work for me now. And so Blackie's not all, all that happy, but he's just glad he's alive at that point. Yeah. You know, because little Z, little Z, I call him little Z. You call him little Zay, whatever. Little Zay, Z, Zay whatever. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's just, some of these names are just <laughs> to try to remember all of them. It's the yeah. hard part. Uh, so, and he says, I'm selling Coke. He made a point to make sure I'm selling Coke. Yeah, he wants to move up in the in the in the scheme of things. He does. He's he's come a long way from uh, 
robbing, you know, for gas trucks and stuff like that, and robbing uh, hotels and brothels. So he wants to try to up his ante by obviously selling coke. So yeah, it just this is just again, this is just a um, a uh, pretty much a, a shot at what type of character this guy is. I mean, we we see this, and we'll see the maturation of this or the lack of maturation of this character, but we see the type of ruthlessness that this character really does uh, possess, and just how people it would be better off without this character in Rio. Yeah, absolutely. But one thing he is good at is business because he he en he enlists the help of the runts, the police. He's got a lot of lookouts. He's got a lot of people in the in the city of God that are kind of keeping an eye out from always reporting to him. So he does. That's the one thing he did do right is that people in the area respect him, and there's no real crime except between root rival gangs. But other than that, there's nothing going on um, until, you know, of course we can't have that for very long, Russell. I mean, no, uh, it wouldn't take, wouldn't be any no. good if nothing was going on. Right. No, this movie would be an hour and a half, not two hours and 10 minutes. But yeah. um, we, we also get back introduced to rocket again. Um, he has pretty much kind of wiggled his way out of, uh, you know, trying to get engulfed in that bad, uh, you know, selling drugs and doing that stuff. He gets a job at a supermarket. And um, I believe this is still in the 70s, correct? Yeah, and, but he also okay. steals Diego's uh, girlfriend, Angelica. And yes. Because uh, Diego gets dumped by Angelica and goes with, goes with uh, Rocket. Yes. And then Diego gets enrolled into doing – more and more drugs and we see the downward spiral that engulfs his life from that from that point on we see the downward spiral that this character is going to um even coming up into the 80s we see how lost this character really is and it's because of the drugs and kind of he makes that point um i don't know if it's in the 70s or the 80s but it's just a point that he makes about like oh yeah um uh, something about not being around, like the, the uh, little Zay wasn't around or whatever. And he's like, yeah, that's what these drug dealers do. They get us hooked. And then they, then they, you know, they have the power pretty much not to, to be around or whatever. And it's these guys that are like fiending, like Tiago ends up doing um, and just kind of like ruins his life with the choices that he makes. Absolutely. But we are introduced to a, a character. What we saw as a child in the sixties, but now he's a teenager in the, 70s and he's little zay's right hand man and his name is benny and benny decides you know i want to have get a new look i want to look different i, I don't want to look the same way i looked before so um when when diego's trying to sell stuff to make money to buy drugs he kind of yeah enlists diego to help him change his look Get his some wardrobe, clothes, yeah. A new haircut. He's got a whole new. Man, he's got a whole new look on outlook on life. He's he doesn't look anything like he did. He's now known as a player. Yeah, he and it's funny because he takes he, he takes advice from Tiago, which is probably the last person you would end up taking advice from. Um, but yeah, he has all this wads of money that he just throws Benny's way to help him pretty much just um, change his look, change his game up a little bit, I guess, to feel more important, to feel like a uh, thug. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's kind of crazy that he, he enlists Tiago's help because he's like the, the last person. He's like the furthest thing from a thug, pretty much. And um, yeah, but, but Benny just wants to try to get in the game somehow. He wants to, he idolizes little Z or little Z or whatever, and just kind of wants to have that lavish lifestyle that little Z does too. So absolutely absolutely um but this is where we get into this whole thing where the mind of little z he he doesn't just want what he already has he wants to take over the other territories yeah. and he's already got blackie working for him but so the only person left is carrot mm -hmm. and he said he has his right hand man the person he can trust the most benny to go kill carrot and of course carrot a Benny doesn't want to kill Carrot because he knows Carrot. Yeah. And he knows Carrot's a good guy. And he, there's no need for a gang war between the two gangs. But you yeah. can't talk to Little Z because he's doing so much coke. 
Yeah, and that's the thing that's it's kind of unfortunate because he can't rationalize what's going on. Like Benny just wants to be a peacemaker and be like, okay, first off, you guys can coexist in the same world. It doesn't matter. It's not like Kara's trying to take anything from Little Z. He's pretty much let, letting Little Z run his little territories and do whatever you know whatever he wants. And Carrot has his small little you know small little uh, section that he does his thing with. And they don't inter they don't interact with each other. There's no problems, and that's what Benny's trying to tell him. Listen, like there's really no need to. Uh, come off to the idea of killing Carrot. That's not going to solve anything. That's just going to make more and more uh, killing and bloodshed out there in those streets in the city of God. And that's something that, you know, it's just so unfortunate that we see this in the film time and time again. It's just like, I feel like, you know, killing and selling drugs is the only way that I think these people understand that um, to get by, that's how, what they have to do. And there was a couple scenes make mention about, oh, why aren't you uh, st- like, uh, why aren't you in school or why aren't you doing this and that? Um, they, they keep they they make little um side remarks about that, and you really see how impoverished that area is, and just what these characters have to you know if they can't do things with you know school and stuff like that, this is what they have to resort in, and it's kind of sad. But um, to to come back home to to your point with little Z, you can't rationalize with somebody who's so far gone with drugs and just power trip in general. He wants he just has that fiend to get more and more and more, and he doesn't care who he has to hurt or kill in order to get that. And that's the, obviously then that'll end up obviously being the downfall uh, later on in the film. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And because of this new outlook on Benny at the clothes, the hair, he's flowing money around. He attracts, unfortunately for rocket, his girl, Angelica, she's going to dance with him at, at, at a party. And, and basically rocket, you see rocket walking on the beach alone. He realizes, damn it. I lost yeah. my girl. I lost my girl to, to Benny. And Benny, yeah. guys, not like it's little Z or anything. It's, no, it's nice. It was not. It was nothing malicious. I think Angela, Angelica, or whatever Angeline or whatever was just in that phase where she just didn't know what she wanted, and I think she just kind of went with the uh, the next big thing or the next, you know, the next popular person that she thought was important. And I think that's how she really, um, you know, moved up like that. Um, but also just to, to make mention before that, because the party you're talking about is the going away party. Benny's going away party, I believe. Oh, that's right. OK, so just before that, I just want to set up a um, rocket has gotten a job at a supermarket. This is just to show you this just sets up pretty much the um, the uh, the reason behind me making this is just the fact that he wants to get out of this area. He wants to get out of this slum, get out of the drugs, get out of the killing, get out of the, you know everything and make a better name for himself. But he gets a job at a supermarket and the kids that he ends up giving a blunt to on the beach end up showing up or whatever there. He's like, oh, it's a guy from the beach, blah, blah, blah. Well, the manager ends up firing him because he thinks that he's part of a gang and he doesn't really want to be associated with that at the supermarket. So that's where he fires Rocket's uh, character. And then that sets up the uh, Benny's going away party. So that's, that's, I just wanted to jump back at that real fast. No, absolutely. Uh, My notes are a little bit off on um, here, but so then we get introduced a little bit more to the runts. Uh, We see him in the grocery store. Like you said, it causes the firing of Rocket, but what they're doing is they're kind of doing some things they're not supposed to be doing, like robbing people, yeah. little, doing little little uh, deals here and there. And that's catching the eye of little Z. And Z, Z, little Z doesn't like people getting into his territory, cutting into his money, his cash flow. Uh, so he goes after the runts. Now, the runts are the, the age of, like, Rocket and little Z were back in the 60s. They're yeah. that age. They're they're like eight or yeah, ten year olds, pretty much. Kids. Yeah, yeah. They're little kids, so this is kind of interesting that a nineteen, eighteen, nineteen year old guy, bigger kids are going after these little kids, but they do, and because they're cutting into their territory, and um, he comes after the runts and ends up killing one of the runts. Yeah, because uh, he, he makes, has- yeah, he makes the kid uh, ch- choose. Yeah. Well, he shoots both of them in the foot. Uh, little Z does, and then he makes one of he makes um who steak. who was who was that steak steak that's right he makes steak he's like well if you if you want and you can see that he doesn't want to kill him he looks at that one kid and the kid's crying he has tears coming out of his eyes and he's like he obviously can't kill that kid he's he he ends up shooting the one that's in the corner like real quiet because I think he he feels less guilty about it but after you kind you kind of see that he knows crap why am I doing this but. 
you know, it's the product of the times. It's pretty much, you know, he, he knows that this may be his only way to better his life is to do this and try to uh, look good in the eyes of little Z. So it's kind of unfortunate that he he's put in that situation. Um, but this just shows the ruthlessness of little Z. He has no problems shooting the little kids in the, in the foot. And I think it's such a powerful scene too. No, you're absolutely right. And, 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 and of course my notes now are showing me that we're at a, uh, what's known in the movie as a sucker's life. Yeah. That's where you get the part where Rocket's working at the grocery store. Okay. Okay. He gets, he gets fired because of the runs. Um, okay. And um, he gets, it takes a bus ride and he's kind of flirting with crime and he sees the gentleman on the bus who's the ticket taker and he's got money and he seems like a nice guy. And his name is uh knockout Ned. And, knockout and Ned, Ned. Yeah. Ned's a good guy. Yeah. He's a, he's a former, uh, I believe battalion or uh, he's in, he was in the armed forces or something like that. Um, very nice guy. And it was funny because he, we see rocket hides the gun that he has in his um, pocket. And I don't, th I believe he said that he was uh, talking to his friend. It doesn't even work. I think he was just using it just to try to get money to scare him. Um, and, th and this is where we see um, uh, how, how nice of a character Ned is. He goes, well, all oh, you guys are from the city of God. I'll let one of you guys go in for free. And I think right then and there is where they had, he had that change of heart and he's like, wow, really, you know, this guy's a really nice guy. I probably shouldn't be doing this. This guy's just trying to make an honest living. And I think, I believe after they get off the bus or whatever, um, he has a, a sidebar with, um, who does he go on the bus with? It's Rocket and, um, is it? Uh, I, the, the, I can't think of the name of the other kid. Yeah. I don't know the other kid's uh, name in my, in my notes. I'm right. trying to think here. Um, they end up was... writing, they end up robbing a guy from Sao Paulo. Yeah, I, yeah, from South Paulo that we end up saying that he ends up getting in the car with and taken somewhere, and yeah, they end up robbing this guy. Um, but yeah, we 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 kind of see the change of heart in Rocket's character. Um, he doesn't want to do the same thing um, that you know his family did or even Little Z did. He kind of wants to go a different route, and this just shows you the innocence of this guy's character. And I think that's why they put that in there with. Um, knock out Ned because you know I, I think he you, you think he's going to do it and then he ends up having a change of heart and I believe he also was going to um there was a, a female I think they were going to try to wasn't there somebody else that they were going to rob or whatever and, and 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 uh uh Rocket justified that too like oh she's a nice girl or something like that she seems like a nice person so you can yeah. tell that they, they don't want to do this no they don't they don't they don't want that uh that life of crime and you know and that's basically, you know, seeing Knockout Ned, seeing some of the things. And and they did rob the guy, even though they were smoking with the guy from Sao Paulo, they did rob the guy from Sao Paulo. But it wasn't like a, a big deal. You know, yeah. Sao Paulo. It's not like it's in Rio de Janeiro. It's not like yeah. it's in the city of God or another. It's okay. We, we They justify yeah. it. He's, in, he's from Sao Paulo. We, we can. Yeah. It's okay. You know, uh, and then we fast forward back to the um, farewell of Benny because beforehand he's been in bed with Angelica. And this is a pretty intense scene. And he basically says, I don't like what's going on. And he talks yeah. to Angelica and he wants to leave. The two of them, basically, they they just kind of want to get out of there. And, and, and I think, you know, he's thinking, well, I did enough for Lil Z. We, we accomplished what we needed to accomplish. Yeah. It's too much for me. Yeah, he'll let me go without repercussion, and um, it's that it's that moment of uh, clarity that Benny's just like, you know what? Uh, I want something more than this. I want to be happy. Um, it seems like him and Angel Angelina have a good thing going. Um, he just wants to, you know, get out of that, separate himself from that life. And then he tells Little Z that, you know, he said, you know, I think, you know, I want out. Um, you know, we're friends. Um, I just this isn't for me anymore. Um, I have a girl now. And um, I just think that, you know, I want more out of life. And, you know, little Z doesn't really say much. You can kind of tell he's like mad and angry. like he's like disappointed and mad about it, but he doesn't really do much about it. Um, but but we end up finding out that uh, Benny ends up getting killed at that party. Is that is kind of where you want to segue into? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. First, what we're going to do is um, what's his name? Little Z's standing around. Everybody having a good old time. Benny's yeah. friends with everybody rubbing elbows. They're dancing. They're having. He sees a girl at a table, and he goes up to, "Hey, do you want to come dance with?" Even yeah. though he doesn't know how to dance, he was like, "I don't want to be the only one left around." Yeah. Like, no, I'm. I got a guy. I'm with a guy. Yeah, she and has a boyfriend. 
And needless to say, we find out the guy that she's with is Knockout Ned. Yeah. And Lil Z ain't having it. Yeah. He goes over to Lil the Knockout Ned says, "Strip naked." Yeah. And and start freaking stripping naked in the middle of the floor. And um, Tiago goes to Benny and says, "Hey, I got this camera. You know, uh, do you want to buy this camera?" And he wants drugs. Yeah. For, dr for drugs. And then. Uh, Benny's like, oh, okay. Because Angelica's like, hey, Rocket will like that camera. He's been wanting to take pictures in this. And so he says, okay, here, take the drugs. Then he calls over Rocket. Here, I got have this camera. While yeah. Knockout Ned's dancing naked in the middle of the dance floor uh, because Lil Dice is jealous that his girl turned him down but was with him. Yeah. Uh, that's I mean, and so this ensues a huge brawl because somebody's – Hiding in the weeds. Somebody's hiding outside where you could see through the room, but you could see in. And they're trying to shoot little Z, but they end up shooting somebody else instead. And you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, it's Benny's unfortunate demise. It's Benny's yeah. unfortunate demise. And he gets shot by who would have, who kind of has it out for little Z for what the way they were treated and whatnot and that's blackie blackie shoots benny accidentally because he was trying to shoot little z um and so um of course little z's unbelievable he, he he can't he, he can't believe what just happened yeah uh, because it's his best friend you know since they were little kids they've been working together since they were little kids um and yeah. This is when we start really ramping up or amping up the, the pressure in this film. I mean, yeah. this um, when Blackie accidentally kills Benny, this gets people like Carrot involved even more because the mind of Little Z just he just he can't he thinks it's Carrot. He thinks yeah. Carrot was seeking revenge on him and accidentally killed Benny. But he doesn't know it was Blackie the whole yeah. time. Yeah, and again, it's just that power trip that little Z's on that um, makes him so paranoid. It makes him think that other people, like Carrot wants, like Carrot wants all of what little Z has, I guess. I think that kind of makes him paranoid. So that's why he retaliates, you know? Yeah. And, and it, it, it's just, yeah, it's unfortunate though. Cause Benny was, I mean, Benny seemed like, you know, a, a good character in the film. He was just trying to get out of that lifestyle. He wanted to better himself. And it's just unfortunate that, you know, they were trying to take out little Z, but they hit Benny. So kind of on wrong place at the wrong time. And he was the only real rational one amongst all of them. He's the only one that was keeping this powder keg from absolutely blowing up. And what happens once he's dead it does blow up. Yeah. He, little Z ends up going after knockout Ned. Uh, oh, knockout Ned. And oh, he goes back, knockout Ned goes back to his house to hide out, I believe, because yeah. there's a, there's a run in where I believe, I think little Z shot, um, shoots um, Ned, but doesn't kill him. Uh, and then he ends up going back to his house or wherever. And that's where Gerson, I believe that's um, Ned's brother, <clears throat> and they're outside of his house or they're, 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 you know, calling him, Hey faggot, come out or whatever, blah, 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 this and that. Um, Cause you see the, the thing where little Z is like, I should have killed him. I should have killed him. And they, they're all calling him out, wanting him to come out. And the family's kind of like pulling him back. Listen, you don't need to get involved in this. And his younger brother Garrison comes out and says, you know what? I'm going to try to stick up for my brother, tries to rationalize with little Z tries to talk to him a little bit. And then we see the thing where he comes out real fast and like an idiot stabs him in the arm instead of like the neck or something like that, that would have killed little Z, which drives me nuts. Um, ends up stab stabbing him in the arm. And then a cloud of bullets end up shooting Ger Gerson dead. And we pretty much just have like a, a deep cut on uh, little Z's arm, but you had a shot to take him out right there. Almost kind of reminded me of Valkyrie and attempting to kill Hitler. You have a shot to kill this guy and higher power and you miss it and in an, an inopportune time they weren't expecting it you could have easily killed this guy but garrison was just trying to uh you know defend his brother uh ends up stabbing little z in the arm and this is where we get knock so, yeah. out finally he's kind of at the at his wits end he can't stand anymore 
He enlists the help of Carrot. Carrot gives him a gun to go after Little Z. And um, he ends up chasing uh, Little Z and his gang down. And, and while they're running, like, Tuba is, like, yelling at Little Z. He's like, blah, 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 yelling all this stuff. And Lil Z turns around and just shoots Tuba after freaking knockout Ned's coming after him. It's just like, yeah. it just starts getting crazy now. Yeah, it, things could start like how you said. It, it's it's that suffocating feeling, like it's coming to the like the bottle head of the of the of the drink. You know, it's it's getting you know tighter and tighter now. Um, things are getting a lot more. There's a lot more at stake now for these characters, and we see like the the sense of panic in some of these characters and their choices that they end up making. Yeah, and of course. Now, Rock, Knockout Knight has no other option. He has to join Carrot's gang. And, of course, they are just planning on going after Little Z's gang. And Little Z's gang is planning on going after Carrot's gang. And so they, you see these montages of all these people. Hey, uh, Little Z's guy raped my sister. Carrot's guy yeah. mugged Here my sister. Wow. Here, have a gun. Here, have a gun. Here, have a gun. And it's like you're 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 throwing more fuel on the fire. It's pretty much this just sets up another generation of thugs and criminals. This is what you're doing. You're just replenishing the people that end up getting killed are just getting replenished by the other the younger kids that are coming into it. And that's just like the never ending cycle that this vicious cycle in the city of God is just kind of spewing out constantly. And it's unfortunate. But like how you said, Ned has no choice. He has to join somebody of power. Carrot is the only one other other than Little Z at the time that is of power. So he pretty much says, listen, you know, I'll join you, but I don't want to kill anybody. I just want I want revenge on my brother. And that's that. Yeah, absolutely. And while all this is going on, this is the revelation that we finally get with Rocket. He ends up going and joining the newspaper uh, crew, the the getting a job as a, as a, an internship, I think it was, or they said it was an internship, but it was like a, he was more of a reporter, I guess at the time. Yeah. But he was delivering papers at the beginning. Yeah. 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 He was delivering papers at the beginning and this is his way to get involved in the newspaper industry. And this is going to all pay off at the later on in the film because, um, you know, we know that he got the camera from Benny. And so he had the camera from ben, well, he had the camera, and somebody else ends up with the camera. And we're going to find out real quick here. Um, um, so Knockout Ned gets shot and arrested by the cops and then gets put on the news. Yep. This infuriates Little Z. I'm the boss. I'm the head honcho around here. Yeah. Why is he getting on the news? Why is he getting in the newspaper? one of those things where he just wants that notoriety. He wants to be recognized. He has such a power trip and such a, um, an ego. He's such like an egotistical character that we've been talking about that he wants, he wants to be on the front page. He wants to do this. He wants to headline things. And this is what plays, plays a role here coming forward here. Yeah. And that's when he asked Diego to take his picture, but of course, Diego doesn't know how to take a picture. So they go and list the help of rocket and rocket takes the pictures and he says to him, he says, here's some money. I want you to develop the pictures. He says, well, I got to take the, uh, the, the, the film, the, I think, yeah. The film out of the camera. No, keep the film, keep the camera, come back with the pictures. I want to see the pictures. And so he goes to some people that he's working with at the newspaper, and he says, hey, can you develop these for me? He says, oh, you're not a reporter. You can't, only reporters can. Yeah, uh, have me develop, and then the reporter that kind of they kind of were friends. He's yeah, just, he's like he's like just take it, just develop it. Yeah, develop mine, and then take his and develop his. And um, and what ends up happening is, the ne- yeah, the, the next the lady, yeah. the editor, the editor gets a hold of the pictures and prints them on the newspaper. And so the picture that he took of the crew of Little Z and whatnot. And then Lee, Little Z is loving this. He's loving it. Sm- I'm on the paper. Blah, blah. It's smack on the front page of the paper. Yeah. 
And it's funny because it's like Rocket thinks he's like screwed at this point. He's like trying to hide out. He's like, they're going to kill me, blah, blah, blah. I can't believe you stole these pictures without my permission, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I didn't know whose they were. They, she's like, but here, here's money for them. You know, we're going to pay you. They're your pictures. We're, we're not going to try to take them without compensating you. And this actually puts the light bulb on in Rocket's head that, wait a minute, I can make a living doing this and, you know, doing something that I love doing. And he's he's somebody that has access to this world that he can photo he, he can photograph almost kind of like how, you know, Superman and Clark Kent, he can kind of, you know, do that because he's there at the same time, um, which it, it, and it's funny that little Z, I think it's like one of the most selfless things he ends up doing kind of not really is giving Rocket the camera because the camera was as Rocket's key to freedom, pretty much the key to bettering his life. I know he had different intentions with it, but because uh, he wanted the notoriety, obviously, of the pictures and stuff like that. But it was almost one of the most selfless things, I think, that Little Z did. Because in essence, that kind of helps uh, Rocket get out of the city of God. Absolutely. It really does. And it gets him in with the editor. And the and he's like, I can't go back home now that I've taken these pictures. That they, they, they'll, they'll kill me because yeah. I was supposed to bring them back, the pictures. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, come over my house. And he ends up going over the editor's house. He's like, well, I only got one bed, so you got to sleep in my bed with me. And needless to say, something has been an ongoing thing from the beginning of the movie. Yeah. He's been wanting to ha break his virginity. And of yeah. all people, he ends up breaking his virginity. Yeah, the editor. The editor of the newspaper. It's like yeah. all people, you know. He's yeah, a kid like still. He's not that old. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. I mean, I guess because, you know, you thought um, – because Angelina, he was the one that he had wanted to, you know, be with and, you know, sleep with and stuff like that. And he doesn't end up, you know, that ends up never coming to fruition. So, yeah, it, fast forward, you know, you know, decades later. And then, yeah, it's it's the editor that he ends up sleeping with. Kind of funny. But, yeah. And then um, we get Knockout Ned's in the hospital. Um, the, the guard that's supposed to be guarding Knockout Ned is having sex with the nurse. And so Karen comes in and gets knocked out they escape uh rescues knock out ned from the hospital and this is when things really start getting serious because they enlist the help of uncle sam i don't know why they call him yeah. uncle sam, but his name is uncle sam and he's got he's got access to all these guns i think he's a police officer or a police detective um from what i've gathered in the film yeah and he's got all these guns from all the from russia from here from there israel yeah. I mean, where all these different uh, things are going on in the world, they have guns and stuff. Um, yeah. And so they, this is when things really start to ramp up. Yeah, and this leads to the uh, obviously the you know the climatic finish of the film. Um, mm -hmm. But it, but it's also uh, good. No, good. We were gonna say. <laughs> This goes back to the beginning of the film. I was just, I was just going to say that. That's why it's so important in the beginning of the film when you see um, Rocket with the camera. It's funny that you get that story, what's leading up to it, and you see pretty much little Z's like, oh, you know, get the chicken or whatever, get the chicken, because they're trying to chase this chicken to uh, kill it. And that's where the police come, the uh, police end up coming out behind because uh, like rockets lit and it's funny because this is like a metaphor for or not a metaphor but it just kind of like it's the symbolism of the film uh you have literally you have rocket in the middle of pretty much good and evil and it's pretty much the whole entire film he's been balancing himself in between the, the you know good and evil you have the, obviously the good you have the police you know that are trying to take down this these criminals you have rocket in the middle innocent you're trying to get the chicken, try to stay alive with his camera, not bothering anybody. And then you have the gang, you have little Z and his entourage of, uh, of thugs. And it's just kind of like a, a, a meta, not like a metaphor, but kind of like just a, a symbolism of the whole entire film, pretty much, you know, he's, he's constantly on the, on the fence of good and evil. And this, this kind of really, uh, comes to a head here. And I, but I just, I love the beginning of that film. I love how they, it's just such a powerful, um, image with with him in the camera and then they they bring it back home at the end and i love how they i love how they tie this film together and that's when the real the all-out gang war starts and everybody's coming after each other the cops are coming after them the, the carrots coming after them um people start getting shot um because he's going to take a picture of them all standing there with their guns and stuff and then guys start getting shot and uh people start getting shot and something we didn't talk about much but I'm going to just bring up uh, just briefly here is when uh, Knockout Ned joins 
Carrot's crew, they do a robbery. And a, a guy in a bank um, oh, gets okay, yeah. shot. A uh, guy yeah. in a bank gets shot. Yeah. And it turns out that his son, Otto. his son is there. I believe his name's son Otto. Stands up. Isn't it? Say that again. I believe his name's Otto. Otto. Yeah, Otto. Yeah, his son Otto, of course. But Knockout Ned, for some reason, doesn't remember Otto. And Otto joins um, um, Carrot's crew. And he still yeah. doesn't remember him. Yeah. And then he's like, kid, you know, why are you joining? You know, why, why, are, you, why are you getting involved? And the kid gets shot by um, the police or one of either Lil Z's crew or the police, one or the other. But then yeah. he's like, kid, why'd you join this? Why, why, why did you get involved in this? And he turns around. And when he turns around, Otto gets up and shoots him in the back. Because prior to that, I believe they asked Otto why he's joining the gang. And he said he wanted to get revenge on the person who killed his father. And that's, that's what, that's what that, that's, that's the tie that together. I'm sorry. Um, no. It was basically, that's why Otto wanted to join the gang is he wanted, um, cause he was there in that bank with his dad when um, uh, Ned shot him. And so that's why he joined the gang. Cause he knew who Ned was obviously. So that was his end to pretty much get Ned. And that's, that's what happens. Yeah, Abby hit the nail on the head. That's he wanted to get Ned. We didn't know that at the time. Yeah. We didn't even recognize the kid. The kid was like, I mean, you're watching the movie and you're not even paying attention enough until yeah. when they do the whole montage of, oh my God, how did we not even notice but that? that? No. That's the thing. Why this movie is so beautifully edited? I, again, that's why I chose this film. It's such it's it, it's beautiful the way it's directed, the cinematography, but the editing in this film, the editing in this film is top notch. Um, I feel like this film's always like two or three steps ahead of you, and then just when you start to catch on, up oh, it's a recap now. So then then you're like, oh, that's what happened. But it's just it's so beautiful storytelling in in this fashion, and that's why this film was such an uh, important one for me to put on this list. And so the cops basically capture people. Some people die, but the cops capture Carrot and Little Z. And they're in the paddy wagon. And, of course, going back to the beginning of the film where he was buying the runts, buying lookouts, buying people, buying the police. The police take him out, Little Z, out of the paddy wagon and keep Carrot in there. Carrot, Carrot's like, yeah, figures. And so we go around the corner and they go on a side street or alley and they start, okay, so this is what you, what do you got for us? And he's, you know, he has a box and he's got money in it. He's got some watches, he's got some stuff. And he says, and the cops go, okay, release them here, take this box, fill it back up. Well, um, meanwhile, meanwhile, Rocket's actually watching all this unfold and he's snapping like some great pictures. Um, so we kind of see, this is where we kind of see, Obviously, the power that is Little Z, that he has the cops in his back pocket. He's pretty much, obviously, the cops want him to fill the, fill the thing back up. Now, Little Z's broke. He has nothing to his name now. Um, and this is where we see Rocket taking the pictures kind of like, you know, and these are powerful pictures because, you know, it's showing that the cops are working together with um, Little Z. And it just shows the very intimate uh, photos that, you know, other people obviously wouldn't see. Um, and that's why, you know, that's such a, a another powerful point in the film, too, because we see that. And then we see um, uh, that's right when the um, I believe the uh, runs come in. And he said, uh, he says to them all, do this, blah, blah, blah. He's like, like, who are you now? It's like pretty much you're like nobody. And they end up turning around. They end up firing, shooting them dead. And guess who's there shooting the camera the whole entire time? Rocket goes over to the body, uh, you know, ends up, you know, obviously the runs end up running away or whatever. And you can see his feet hanging out of the alley. But then you see Rocket's character come up and he snaps some. Uh, you know, excellent photographs of the dead body of little Z. And it just, this, I, like how everything ties together in this film. I just, I really, really uh, appreciate it. Such great storytelling, great filmmaking. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. It really, um, you know, in the runs get revenge. You know, once again, we go back, we play backwards because they, he needs the runs to help him because he needs to build up his army to go up against care. So he gives the runs guns. And the guns that he gives the runts, you know, they don't forget that he killed their friend earlier in the film. And yeah. so the same guns that Lil Z gives to the runts, they use to kill him. 
and they yeah. get revenge. And now they are the big shots. They, yeah. Even though they're the runs, they're still they they think they're big shots, you know. And, and uh, they're they're planning yeah. their diff, different jobs, and talking their different. Yeah. And again, this just shows you the the um, the you know the the slums and the in the life in the city of God. It's just it's constant you know, constant chaos, constant killing and, and drugs and all that other stuff. And we just see another generation, another generation of criminals there. We just see, and basically what I kind of leave with at the end of the film is this is going to happen all over again. It, like it's something not to that, it, not like that same storyline, but all this is just going to interwo, you know, interweave another story and, and people are going to get killed. And, and it's just, you know, it's just going to be mindless killing over, over nothing. And it's and unfortunate. If it, and if it wasn't for our, our, our friend Rocket, who gets an internship with the newspaper, none of this would have been documented. No. None of this would have been turned into a movie, and none of this would have been uh, dictated to people like us from America. Yeah. We didn't know any of this was going on. You know, We no. weren't paying attention to South American newspapers or South American gangs in Rio de Janeiro. And that's, that's the beauty of this film is, and that's what's the beauty of film in general, you get to see stories like this that you normally yeah. would not get to see. Thank you, thank God, Rocket was there. Yeah, and 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 and, and really, that end up, you know, the camera end up saving his life, got him out of the slums, got him out of being a casualty. You know, for for that, he told a story that might otherwise not have been told had it not been for the camera. So, um, the camera was, you know, a very uh, a very important part of this film. Absolutely, and it was the eyes. It was really the eyes of everybody looking at the movie in a lot of ways. You yeah. know, it was kind of like the eyes of the movie, of the film in a lot of ways. But one of the questions, um, you know, this is a um, series of um, um, shows that I do. It's based on the book by Robert Osborne. And I did season one, um, all, the, all the movies that were in the book in season one, the 52 must-see movies and why they matter. Um, and now, and in season two, we're going off the book. And I, and I enlisted help from uh, you and some others to nominate films that you felt were essential. And the big question with, with, the, with uh, the 52 must-see movies and why they matter is that they are essential films. And so the question I ask is, what is so essential about City of God, in your opinion, uh, Russell? I feel like this is a story that really hasn't been told i mean you have you're going into the slums with these characters you're seeing the life they live the the life of crime they're living and this is an important story it's an important to know because it's out there there's crime continually out there and to see generation after generation you know you know coming about and doing crime again it's just the cycle the vicious cycle continues and this film's powerful it tells that and um it, it it does show a story of you know triumph of one character rocket you know overcoming all the odds overcoming all the odds of you know he could have joined the gang could have been killed could have done this but instead it's it's the power of the camera it was the power of the camera that saves his life and i think this movie is just so important because it does tell this story that otherwise i don't think we would we would uh, we would know about and the way that fernando mieles uh, directs this film it's beautiful and the, the the cinematography like i said in certain scenes is it's beautiful you feel like you're there in the slums you feel like you're there on the beach with them you're in first person the whole entire time and you're on this roller coaster ride through three decades of you know 60s and the 70s and up to the 80s um and it's just an important film uh, to me i just i think it's you know beautifully shot love the editing in this film because it, it's edited perfectly like this is how you edit a film um uh, everything just flows together nothing feels rushed everything feels earned in this film um and it's raw it's real that's why i chose it uh it was a movie that i saw back in 2002 when it came out and um, it just stuck with me. It was one of those films I was like, yep, this is going to stick with me. And I never knew, like, and I told you at the beginning of this, I was, I was shocked to see that, like, IMDb, you know, because they rate movies that, oh, Avengers will be in the top 10 or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, but this was 21, and I was shocked because, like, I, I really have a lot of love for this film, and I'm glad other people do, too. And, uh, you know, and to me, that's why this is important. It's a different film. It's not your um, cookie cutter type movie. You know, it, it's it's different. It's outside the box and it's not afraid to take chances. And um, the movie is very raw. It shows you this is what's going on in real life. This happens every single day. And I think it's an eye opening experience, kind of what like Saving Private Ryan or other war films were to eye opening experiences. They do this one in the slums with talking about drugs and just the, the ghetto and how how rough life can be there and how there are really no other escapes sometimes you know and it's it's scary it's unfortunate but that's why this film's so important 
Now you hit the nail on the head. It, it really is an eye-opening look at the world of Rio de Janeiro and the slums and the poverty. And and this is just one country and one city. You know, it, it's happening in like Czechoslovakia. It's happening oh, yeah. in, in Belfast, Northern Ireland. It's happening in so many different. It's happening in places like Syria and all and all over the world. And in all over the decades and the in the years that have gone by over. And, and, and how these kind of wars and how these kinds of things happen. And, and, and it's, it's incredible how the, the planet is so different in so many of these places, but yet so similar. And, and the things that people take into their own hands and, and create crime and create war, and whether it's oh, yeah. in, in this country or that country or whatever yeah. country, it, the people resort to the same things a lot of yeah. And no. It's always a, it's the same type of setting too. It's like a bad, bad you know, bad childhood, bad background, or something like that. Uh, feel impoverished and stuff like that. Feel there's no other way to get out to better your life. Let's go ahead and do this crime. And other people see it and they mirror it. And that's what spawns another generation of criminals. And it's the same thing that goes on and on and on. It's a it's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious carousel that uh, it just it's unfortunate that it's, it constantly continues and it's going to constantly continue because people, you know, other people feel like there's no other way out. This is the only way to achieve what we really want to achieve their their uh, uh, not so much their American dream, but to, you know, their their better life for themselves or whatever. They feel like doing this is the only way that they're going to get to where they need to go. And it's unfortunate. Absolutely. Um, I was glad we had a chance to talk about this and I, and I was glad to uh, watch this film. Glad you nominated it, uh, Russell, because it was an eye opening experience to me. And it's a movie I had been wanting to watch. I just hadn't had an opportunity until you nominated it. And, 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 uh, and I had actually, actually had to watch it twice to really yeah. get the full, full brunt and the full, full gist of the story and everything that went it went into it uh but uh i appreciate you really uh nominating it um where can you be found uh yeah i'm uh, on youtube house hollywood reviews i do movie reviews trailer reactions all that fun stuff um i'm also on uh itunes now with a podcast with my buddy chance ellison we have a podcast called notorious by chance we do uh, kind of trailer breakdowns. We talk about the new trailers that have come out and we talk about a movie that we put up for a poll that people can vote on. We just shot um, the third episode yesterday where we talked about the awful film Electra starring Jennifer Gardner um, and pretty much can find me anywhere else. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Stardust, Letterbox, HH Wood Reviews. Uh, and I, I compete in movie trivia. Anything where movie trivia could be uh, had, I love that. I love movies and I love everything about them. So I'm always uh, looking forward to competing in movie trivia. And I just love talking movies. That's why I jumped on this opportunity to do the show with you. And you know, I'm glad you had me on. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, you can find me at Dan Skip Allen on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. Um, also, you can find me at cinesportstalk.com, cinesportstalk.com. That's C-I-N-E-S-P-O-R-T-A-L-K.com. Um, and that's where I do written reviews of movies that I see. Um, and so for Chance, I mean, uh, <laughs> Chance, you, you made it. You're good. Chance and You're I good. <laughs> I, uh, I, I completely screwed that up. You're good. For Russell and myself, good night.